Hey guys, Basil and Will with Grayson Hobby, and today we got a new product. We're gonna do a high level review. It is a new radio from Radio Master. It is the Zorro. This one is the ELRS system. It's not the traditional form one that you have used to. It's something new, it's open source. Yes. More open source. Bang for the buck, I think this is a absolute winner in the RC industry. Um, I can't imagine a better product for this price point. And before we go any further, we do have a starter package with the ELRS system. It comes with the Zora radio, receivers, and battery. All one nice bundle, so it gets you in the air. You should check out the link below. All right, well, where do I pick up a Zoro? You can pick them up at graysonhobby.com or come to the store in Loganville, Georgia and buy one in store. Everything is here, located here in Loganville. Nothing drop ships. Uh, come on in, put your hands on one, pick up some batteries and get some receivers. All right, well, there's multiple options of the Zorro. We have the 4-1 ELRS, that CC2500 guy. The CC2500, I would just not worry about that one unless you are diehard Free Sky only D16, D8. Uh, don't, don't bother. Don't waste your money. Like it's, I don't know why they even make that one. Radio Master, just discontinue it. Just, pff, bye. Um, the four-in-one module, if you are new to the hobby, um, you're buying a lot of plug and play stuff and things you're, you want to do, and you're not like, oh, I want to jump on GitHub and I want to look at the newest software and I want to update everything every day it comes out, stick with the four-in-one. If you are that kind of person that wants the latest and greatest technology, open source, and you like the nerding out on it, I guess, the, the ELRS look, yeah. is actually really cool because it's rapidly advancing right now. Um, but if you're not computer savvy, if you're not really good with the computers, moving files around, stuff like that, I would probably wait, get the 4-in-1 module, and then get an ELRS module, or 4-in-1 version and an ELRS module later on to add to the 4-in-1. Then you have the ultimate everything. Plus, the ELRS external modules, some of them are higher power than what would be in the Zora 2. Uh, okay. Not that you'd really need it, but it is another idea. Between the two, I'd probably get the 4-in-1 and then get the module later. But if you're planning on only flying ELRS, then, I mean, it's a valid option too. But if they're around the same price, I would, me personally, because I have so many older drones, 4-in-1. Right. But uh, this is pretty cool either way. Or get both. All right, guys, so we have the Zorro, Radio Master Zorro here. Let's open the sucker up. This is an ELRS model. No way, those do exist. They do exist, yes. So let's get this cracked open. As you can see, not much in the box. It's kind of like the TX-12 packaging if you've ever opened one of those or seen our video. But you have a paper manual that has, just basically goes over what the buttons are from there. YouTube, Google, you know, the normal. So let's get this open. This is just a little screen cover here. We have USB charge cord, data cord, uh, Velcro straps if you're doing the external battery, and a screen protector. Wow, that's a tiny little screen protector. All right, and that's it. That's literally what's in the box. <clears throat> um, so the Zorro doesn't turn on because it doesn't come with batteries. Unlike the lower end model from Radio Masters and stuff like that, the T8, uh, it does not include a battery. So you will need two Eight, uh, ooh, what is it? 18350 batteries. 18350, oh my gosh. Yeah, so they're not 18650s, they are smaller. So an 18650 is that size. 18350 is a lot shorter, obviously, by the number. So you'll need two of these. Uh, the batteries have usually come with like a little tape thing on them, so you have to peel that off, and you'll be powered up. So. All right, so whether you get the 4-in-1 model or the ELRS model, or even the, I believe there is a CC2500 only model, which I don't know why anybody would buy that unless it's like $2 less. I, I, anyways, four in one module in ELRS. Uh, the radio itself, after you put the batteries in, you do have a long delay for the power button. And I like that because, HTX. oh, Edge TX, I forgot to tell you guys that. Um, so these are coming with Edge TX pre flash on it. Now, just because it's Edge TX doesn't mean it has a touch screen, guys. This is not a touch screen. This is still their buttons and all that. Edge TX is just a fork of uh Beta. open tx essentially oh, yeah, right. um yeah, well it's it's different but yeah anyways this is more like uh open tx overall but it has features that edge tx that, that open tx was lacking okay. um you'll see here a lot of buttons you got the system button return back pay you know page forward etc model button telemetry button menu button the roll wheel you can push the actual scroll wheel heels here as well trim tabs this is one thing some of the other smaller radios don't have is the trim tabs I like this layout. This is actually a very comfortable radio to hold. I got pretty tiny hands, as you can see. Um, no, I got large hands and still comfortable. That was the one thing a lot of these radios are just too small for me. 
this one holds just right. I do have one gripe on it and we'll get to that in a minute. <clears throat> but as far as the radio itself, you'll see it has multi switches, sliders, and momentary buttons. So these are two position switches in the rear and then the two front switches are three position. You have uh, sliders here, which when you set them up, um, you can have them make an audible beep on there, but they don't have a defined click spot like the Mark II TX-16 is gonna have. There's no like center divot. So these are just kind of floating around. And that's one thing I wish they would have fixed on that is actually made it to where either a spring return possible or um, for centering or actually have a nice little notch to feel the center. Uh, these momentary buttons are great for pre-arming, buzzer, etc. Um, there's also two momentaries on the back and um, I think just full of buttons everywhere, huh? Yeah, I mean they assigned a lot of stuff on this, but the only thing for me and I'm I'm sure everyone holds differently, I find myself really hunting for these back buttons. Uh, if anybody's familiar with like Xbox game controllers and so, I think some of the PlayStation ones they have different buttons and paddles and stuff like that. Um, I'm curious to see if anybody can 3D print like a mod to where we could put like a little paddle, like a screw and a, a paddle. Oh, on that'd it. be cool. Uh, that would be awesome. Or Radio Master, maybe some aftermarket stuff. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but the gimbals feel really nice. So are they uh, hall gimbals? Yeah, they are hall effect gimbals. They're Ooh. not potentiometers like the cheaper radios and all that. Okay. Um, if you are getting the ELRS model and you say you do want uh, the Free Sky Spectrum option, you can get a multi module, a nano multi module. And put it right there if you're getting the four in one module and you want express lrs or crossfire etc or whatever you want there is external modules you can put in here this uses the nano module not the micro module but the nano module the one that back in the day was only good for y1 radio right yeah it was pretty much the original free sky this yeah. style radio yep okay um but as far as the radio goes very good feeling the uh, grip cheeks pretty easy to get off to get to the battery uh, battery life, um, not bad. I haven't had it long enough to really run the battery out. Uh, I've been kind of leaving it on charger and stuff like that while I'm setting up other things. Good question. How do you charge? <clears throat> so the charging is done with a USB-C cable. And let me put that grip cheek back on. There you go. Um, through the bottom right here. Oh, so I guess now it's yeah, so standard. You, so, so you have a top port here. That is the SD card and the headphone jack. There is a USB-C for data, so if you're going to use a simulator or connect to the computer and all that, you'll use that one. And the charging. And the charging is ooh, the bottom. I didn't put the grip on all the way. <laughs> uh, yeah, the charging is right here. Okay, so I guess now the days. And taken... this is the external battery port. So if you want to use a larger battery and strap it here, so if you're I guess flying for crazy amounts of time or just going to have an all-day event and you don't want to have to charge it again. Or what if you don't have 18.3 whatever they're called? 18.350s. Uh, personally, I just get an extra cent and swap them. I mean, it only takes a minute, yeah. but. Uh, cause I, I wouldn't want the bulk right there. That, that's just me. Yeah, yeah, me um, too. I will say though, the charge time on this, uh, battery out of the box, it was like 30 minutes and it was charged. So, oh, that's pretty quick. um, the results might vary depending on what capacity batteries you're going to use, obviously, but the factory batteries charge up really quick and they come about half charge usually out of the box. Um, so, I mean, as far as that goes, if it's, if I use it for a couple hours and then charge it back up and it's under an hour charge time, that's like the drive home or driving to the next spot to go fly. Mm -hmm. So that's not a bad, I mean, charge time is really not bad at all. Um, and I personally don't probably fly that much at one time. Um, cause you're busy picking up your crash drones. No, cause I'm busy filling orders and tech support. <laughs> All right, so hey, where's the antenna on this guy? So unlike other radios in this size that had only internal antennas or you had to screw in an external one, this one actually has a fold-out antenna, if I can get my hands in there, sorry. Pops out like that, and then you can adjust it, so. Oh, turn it this way? Yep. Oh, okay. So it does have, really, I don't even think you really need to take that out, but if you want that extreme range or whatever, sure. okay. go so it does for have it. An you know. If it makes you feel better at night, you know, go for it. All right, so we got the radio. E yeah, LRS. this is the ELRS. And then what about receivers? Can I so, use my old 2.0? No, so you're going to need an ELRS receiver. Um, and Radio Master is making two receivers as of right now. I believe there's plans to make a third. Uh, but from what we've seen is only two at the moment. It's uh, EPS-01 and EPS-02, I think it's called. Or e EP-1, EP-2. Um, and it's the type of antenna. So, Ooh, brand new. Open oh, the package. breaking the seal. This is tiny. That is small. So, what's do you know what the uh, range on those guys? <laughs> that is tiny, guys. What do they claim for the range? Um, 
gosh, look at that. That is the size of my fingertip. This is the receiver here. You can see it's a 10 by 10 millimeters, roughly. Uh, and then this is the failed attempt at a rushed manual from Radio Master. Guys, I got to ask, what happened here? We have a picture of a receiver. Yes, I understand that's printed on the back of the board what the pinout is. But if you're going to print a page, at least, at least put a diagram of what the pinout is for those of us that can't see this. Um... I think the manual is very lackluster. Again, I know it's open source. This stuff is constantly evolving, but uh, I would like to see a little more information on your manuals. You guys did a pretty good job on your other receivers. Uh, this is, I'm going to give you guys a, a C minus on this one. Okay. I'm not going to go two bean. Uh, you didn't fail because there is actual paper manual with it, but not so good. And now moving on to the next receiver here, this one. Oh, I'm going to have to open this one with a knife. Um, this one is the EP1 receiver. The EP1 receiver comes with two antennas. Again, a short antenna and a long antenna. And they are roughly, let's see what length we got here. One antenna is, let's say 95 millimeters long. And the other antenna, the short antenna is 45 millimeters long. And how do those antennas go on? <clears throat> they just snap on, they're a UFO. Okay. And I would venture to say something like a tracer antenna would probably work too. I have not checked, confirmed. That's something to look online at a later date. But um, yep, there's an antenna. So if you need to swap it right there, again, the pinout RXTX 5 volt ground uh, is on the receiver, but not on the manual. Are you guys even printed an antenna this time and didn't print it? Come on, guys. Um, now, if you guys are looking at these, and you've used the ELRS before, I'm new to it. Uh, I will say I'm very green to ELRS, so I'm learning with you guys as we do these videos. Um, you'll probably notice these look very familiar to a certain company. Um, Wait, is the company happy? They they are happy. Okay. Um, Wait, do they make models? I believe they do. Okay, enough um, said. This looks awfully <laughs> lot, a lot alike. Products. Wait, in you fact, can't, you can't, you can't I, say that word. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, models that are happy. Okay. <laughs> uh, the part numbers actually look similar too. So it's something this small, it's crazy how how they can even do this. God, it's amazing. It is um, amazing. All right, let's put one on the drum. Right here. All right. So um, you will need a crossfire style setup. So if you guys are new to ELRS and you are soldering one up, and you get a drone, let's say you buy this guy right here and you get one of these chintzy paper manuals, um, what you'll be looking for when you set up your drone is crossfire. So if there's a crossfire receiver diagram, you'll wanna use that. So it uses the same RXTX 5 volt and ground wiring setup that you would for a crossfire receiver. So is it the same up, thing for Betaflight too, or? In Betaflight, you'll just select crossfire protocol. Okay. Um, there's other things you can set up, telemetry, stuff, stuff like that, and that's more in the ELRS configurator. That will be at a later time. That is its own video in itself. Okay, so show um, us how this guy fits in that big drone right there. So this little receiver, I just tucked in here because um, it fit, and then I ran the wire here because I was rushing to fly between customers yesterday, and I really wanted to try this drone. So but this that's, is that's not a, nice a super secure location at all. Uh, I just wanted to get away from the GPS and all that, so it's okay. over here. Um, was it pretty, for the some, somebody who's brand new to it, was it pretty easy to do? Yeah, it's just four pads. Now, this particular drone, I did have to take the stack apart because the RXTX is on different sides of the board. But that's, that's irrelevant. But that's specific yeah. to the board. Um, if you're doing something like the Baby Ape here, the Baby Ape's going to be pretty easy because you'll be using uh, the four pads, the RXTX 5 volt and ground over here, you just won't use this white wire that I've soldered here. So it's easy to get to on this one. So if you wanted to put something like the, um, oh, what do you call it? EP2 receiver or EP1, either one, you can put this sucker in here pretty easily. Um, plenty of room, even on the small drone for. No kidding. Wow, this is a tiny receiver, guys. This is super small. So. <sighs> okay, that's it for the first look at the Zorro, at least for us. Yeah, so hopefully you guys have an idea of what you're looking for. Uh, if you are looking for a joystick style controller, I will say, I think, personally, I think the Zorro is the way to go. We've held the Jumper one. We've held some of the other company ones. Uh, this 
it has a good weight to it. It feels really good. The switches, other than the back buttons for me, are in the best positions I've seen so far. And it's just laid out really well. Despite it not being a touchscreen, which I think is would be amazing if it was a color touchscreen, but at this price point, you can't expect that. Right. Um, bang for the buck, I think this is a absolute winner in the RC industry. Um, I can't imagine a better product for this price point. There it is. He has spoken.